Welcome back. This is lesson nine of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 10. And in this lesson, in this video, we'll go over all the materials we covered in this session. So in this session, what we wanted to do is we wanted to take a deep learning model we trained a few sessions before. It was a clothing classification model. So we trained this model a few weeks ago. And what we wanted to do here is we wanted to see how we can deploy this model using Kubernetes. So for that, we discussed the architecture for our system. This architecture consists of two parts. The first part is the TensorFlow serving component. This component uses TensorFlow serving tool from TensorFlow that is written in C++. It's optimized for serving TensorFlow models. It's um, super fast. It only focuses on inference and it uses optimized binary protocol for communicating gRPC. gRPC is more performant than JSON and the data that we need to send, uh, it takes less space because it's optimized binary format, unlike JSON. So TensorFlow serving uses gRPC. And because of this reason, we needed to have another component, sort of a gateway to our serving component that takes care of all the pre-processing of converting the whatever user sends to us to this protobuf format, and then it uses gRPC to communicate to TensorFlow serving. Even though our system becomes more complex, now we have two components instead of one, it also gives us a bit of extra benefits, such as that we can now split the inference part from the pre-processing part, and we can run the pre-processing or on a less powerful machine using CPUs, for example, and we can run the inference part on a GPU machine and we can scale them independently. We can have two GPU machines running inference and let's say five CPU machines running the pre-processing, the gateway thing. To implement that, we first prepared everything. So we run everything locally. We run TensorFlow serving locally. We run the gateway locally. And one of the things we learned in this session as well was Docker Compose, which is a convenient way of running multiple services and then linking them together. So we can use them together as one thing. After doing that, we talked about Kubernetes and the main concepts in Kubernetes. And then we set up Kubernetes locally. We used Kind for that. Kind is a lightweight Kubernetes server that you can run on your laptop. All you need to have is Docker. Then it talks to the Docker to set up a small OneNote Kubernetes cluster on your computer. And we used this OneNote Kubernetes cluster to experiment with things locally. So we actually deployed this thing locally. We did all that on our local machine. And then we took everything that we did all our, our local experiments and deployed to AKS cluster. AKS cluster is a service in AWS that gives us Kubernetes that we can just use. Remember, it's not free, so you have to pay money for that. Yeah, this is what we did in this session. We learned about TensorFlow serving. We learned about protobuf. We learned about how to use Kubernetes for deploying such things. There are a few things that you can do to learn more about Kubernetes and about deploying models with Kubernetes. We used Kind for doing things locally, but that's not the only option. So there are other options like Minikube, K3D, K3S, Micro, K8S. So there is a bunch of them and there is a thing called AKS Anywhere. So this is like having your own local AKS cluster. You can experiment with them locally and see what you like. So for example, Minikube uses VirtualBox for creating all these nodes. So it's more isolated while Kind is more lightweight. So you can see different things and see what you like more. Actually, there are a few things that you can install locally that I didn't add here yet. This is something my colleague suggested that I should also include. I don't have personal experience using these things. The first one is a thing called Rancher Desktop. So this is similar to Docker Desktop, but for Kubernetes. So you can experiment with this to install Kubernetes clusters locally. So I will include a link here. By the way, speaking of Docker Desktop, actually, I think it also has some sort of Kubernetes cluster. I have not used it. Maybe you can also explore and see. Maybe, let's say, if you use Windows, it's easier to actually use Docker Desktop for setting up a local Kubernetes cluster than what we did with Kind. And then the other thing that my colleague recommended me is called Lens Kubernetes. So Lens, this is a, like integrated environment for Kubernetes, for monitoring Kubernetes things. So if you want to learn more about Kubernetes, you should install it. This is my understanding. This is something like kubectl, but with graphic interface. There is quite a bunch of things there. So I will include the link here in 
this session, we use AKS. That's not the only managed Kubernetes available for us in the cloud. We have a Kubernetes in the Google Cloud Platform. We have Kubernetes in Azure. Then there is a bunch of others. For example, there is one from DigitalOcean. And I think Oracle Cloud, IBM Cloud, probably any cloud provider you can think of has Kubernetes as a service that you can just rent and not worry about managing it. So, for example, you can look up managed Kubernetes and you will see like many different options of what kind of Kubernetes you can use. This one from DigitalOcean seems pretty cheap, $10 per month. And yeah, I don't know what is IONOS and uh, yeah, Ubuntu, NetWays, there is a ton of them. You can check them and see which one you like more. The good thing about Kubernetes is the configs, the config files we created here, they will work on any Kubernetes. So we will probably need to change this uh, image a little bit. For this image, it's AWS specific, so it uses ACR, but all other cloud providers, they have their own way of hosting images. You'll just need to change that, but the rest will be the same. We will not need to change anything. These YAML files will stay the same, apart from that uh, one thing where we specify the names of the images. Yeah, so you can experiment with other clouds and uh, use Kubernetes from there. And then what you can also do is um, you can take the project you did, the midterm project, and try to deploy it with Kubernetes. Or let's say the projects we did in other sessions, for example, the churn prediction model or the risk scoring model. They don't have to be as complex as uh, what we created in this session. So in this session, remember, we created this two-tier architecture for TensorFlow serving, but usually one is enough. And for example, one other thing you can try doing is take the code from the previous session when we deploy TensorFlow Lite model to Lambda. You can do this and rewrite it using Flask and deploy it to Kubernetes. And it will be just one thing. So you will not need to split it into two parts. Then one last thing is I mentioned that Kubernetes namespaces is out of the scope. And uh, the namespace, if you remember, we talked a bit about namespaces here when we were talking about the DNS names for the services. Here we have this dot default. This is the default namespace. And namespaces are quite useful for organizing your applications into related areas. For example, in one uh, namespace, you can have all the deployments, all the pods for one project, in another namespace for another project, or sometimes maybe per team, like each team would have its own namespace. I think this is how we use Kubernetes at OLX. We have multiple clusters and then on each cluster, each team gets a namespace and they can do whatever they want within this namespace. So you can learn about namespaces more and uh, they're quite useful and you can use them as well. So that's all for this session. I hope you enjoyed it. And for the homework, I think I haven't really figured it out what we will do exactly. I think we will deploy this churn prediction model with Kubernetes. So it will be a little bit simpler than what we did here in the session. And in the next session, we will talk about Kubeflow as a simpler alternative. In Kubeflow, we do not need to write so much YAML. So it's slightly less YAML than that. It takes care of some things for us, so we don't need to worry about them. But this is nothing else but I think on top of Kubernetes that lets us develop things and deploy things to Kubernetes faster. So this is something we will cover in the next session. So see you in the next session.